Good afternoon. Good to be with you. As we celebrate God's grace and love today, we are on page, uh, pardon me, I lost my place. Page 323, page, excuse me, it's page 320, page 320. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just forget and forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. and his mercy endureth forever. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved thee with thy whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of our, all of our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our colic prayer can be found on your insert for today. As we celebrate the commemoration of Anne McCarthy Braden. O oh God of all people who raises, who raises up prophets in all times and in places, we give th you thanks for your servant Anne Braden who helped us to see the racial injustice and social inequality must be rooted out and persistence and determined action. Kindle in us the vision of a, to recognize the needs before us today and give us the courage and commitment to stand against the injustices in our world. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's sacred words. Our lay reader is Jim McElroy today. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. It will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It would be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. If we may read in unison, please, Psalm 40, verse 1 through 5. Again, together. I waited, waited patiently, patiently for the Lord. the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Voice. He drew me Lord up from the desolate pit, pit out of the miry bog, bog and set, set his feet upon a rock, rock making my steps, steps secure. He, he put, put a new song, song in my mouth, mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. 
You have multiplied, O Lord, my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Let us stand for the gospel, a reading from the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Our reading comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength of His arm. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts and their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May what, I be, may what I am about to say be in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So today we are commemorating Anne McCarthy uh, Braden. Uh, she was a social activist and journalist who died on this date in 2006 here in, our, in Kentucky. She was born on July 28th in 1924 and grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, and grew up also in Anniston, Alabama. She attended Randolph-Macon Women's College in Lynchburg, Virginia, and had a degree in English. It was there that she felt, and as she served in uh, Louisville, she married Carl Braden, a fellow reporter, and that is where she made her career and her activism. After they traveled to Africa, they came back with an idea that all people should be treated with equality and for themselves, indeed, that is what became a part of them. Unfortunately, during the 1960s, this is where uh, their writings were counter-cultural in the United States and many places around the world. Many times they were persecuted, their house was burned down and bombed, and they were uh, brought to court on the law of sedition against the state of Alabama. Her husband, Carl, was sentenced to 15 years of imprisonment for sedition, and they fought this in the courts for many years. And the, the Supreme Court finally struck down all sedition laws within states in the United States. It was from there that they created the organization called the Southern Organization Committee for Economic and Social Justice. Anne Braden today is a remembrance of the hard work that a woman could do and also the feistiness of not giving up for those who have no voice. Today, the University of Louisville opened uh, in 2007 the Institute of Uh, continued social justice and understanding at the Ann Braden Institute and Social Justice Research Facility. We remember her today as a proud member of our diocese here in the state, in the Diocese of Kentucky, and we remember her hard work fighting for the cause that Jesus Christ gave to us to help the hungry, to feed the needy, feed the hungry and to feed the need and take care of the needy, clothe the naked, 
These were all the things that he stated in the Beatitudes. And today we hear in Luke's gospel, reminding us Mary's telling Elizabeth of the magnificence of God's grace to be rejoicing that we should from generation to generation speak for those without a voice and to be that strength of that arm to help those in need. May we continue to feed the hungry and to help fill those places where there is injustice. As the book of Isaiah reminds us, there will be tears, but there will also be tears for joy. Let us rejoice today and give thanks for people like Anne Braden, those who speak for the voiceless and who are not tireless in their cause. Amen. Let us now stand and offer our prayers as people of God. I invite you to turn to page 388, page 388, prayers of the people, form 3. Um, excuse me, 387, page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Pray for those prayers in, in, written in our book of prayerful intentions here at Grace Episcopal Church. Especially I'd like to remember um, the repose of the soul of Mary Hammond who will be laid to rest this Friday at 11 a.m. Pray for her family today. Pray for those who are having surgery or those recovering, especially for Bill. I'd like to remember him. I pray for Anne, for Dabney. For those who are uh, in new assisted living facilities or nursing homes, I'd like to especially remember Susan. Pray for my father, Delbert, as well. I'd also like to remember all those who are celebrating their birthdays or wedding anniversaries today, this week especially for Julie Harris, for Carol Perdone, for Mary Harper, for Keith Emmons, Megan Hogenkamp, and Eddie Narosniak. We give thanks for all these wonderful people of God and for all those who might be celebrating a birthday or an anniversary. We pray as well for those uh, women who are pregnant and their husbands. We pray, O oh God, for them and that they may have healthy pregnancies especially for uh, Hannah Shelley, our director of Pair, uh, Children's and Youth Ministry here at our church. Pray for all of our expectant mothers and those who are giving birth today, especially that they may have safe and healthy babies and especially for their doctors and nurses who are caring for all of our loved ones. We pray for peace in the Middle East and for in Ukraine and that the end of war We pray for inclement weather for places that are experiencing that, that you may keep all people and animals safe as well.
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon those who turn to you for help and for you who are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I also like to remember Reverend Kempton Baldridge who hurt his arm uh, over the weekend as well. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace and joy. Peace God's peace, peace with you. Charles. Thank you, Jim. Peace, Gary. <laughs> have a couple of announcements. So we have, uh, we, we are uh, having um, our uh, family soup and potluck suppers again on this evening at 515. I hope you can come and join us. This evening's uh, cuisine is Asian cuisine. So whatever uh, cuisine that you like with is Asian, come and join us here at Grace Episcopal at 515. And then right afterwards, come and join us for a godly play for our little, uh, little ones. And then also at, at 6 o'clock as well uh, for adult education. We're uh, discussing... Uh, the Holy Land of what it means, how it is to live like a Christian in the Holy Land. And that'll be done uh, continuing that series at 6 p.m. for adult education. Please join me this evening and on Thursdays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays for Compline Virtual Night Prayer found right here on our Facebook page uh, each evening at 9 p.m. We're also looking for volunteers to help with Vintage Grace. If you are interested, please contact our parish nurse, Peggy Henney, in organizing themes for Vintage Grace this year. Also, Peggy, uh, Ms. Peggy is also offering CPR classes. If you are a parishioner, um, those are uh, little to be uh, uh, below half price. And so uh, if you're a staff member, those are free. But if you, if you would like to learn CPR and be certified uh, for two years, uh, please contact par uh, parish nurse Peggy Henney for that more information. Also, as I mentioned um, uh, on uh, this Friday, we will be uh, celebrating the life of a uh, memorial of uh, Mary Hammond. I uh, hope if you would like to join us for uh, saying thank you and also uh, being with us uh, to celebrate her life and to support her family. That'll be at 11 a.m. Visitation is from 9 to 11 a.m. this Friday, uh, March 8th. Uh, and we'll also be streaming it live right here on our Facebook page as well if you cannot be with us in person. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a sacrifice unto God. Please stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise thee, ye heavenly host. Praise thee, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We continue our service on page 
340 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 340. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is very meet and right and our bounded duty that we should in all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose for us again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed it is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and did make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy did give us thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in, he, in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee. The memorial of thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant that we beseech thee, all that who partake in this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we all, may, and all thy whole church, may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. O Lamb of God, 
that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for you, the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I'll first distribute the bread and then the chalice and the cup. All are welcome. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation. God so loved the world that he gave us his only son, that all who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Let us offer our prayer after communion found on page 339 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 339. Please stand and let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for Thou that dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always.
Let us go forth and be the church. Hallelujah. Oh, no, I can't say that word. Let us go forth and be the church. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Thank you, Jim.